and decided to take her 15 month old after she heard what precautions the pediatrician was taking. It's probably safer than going to the grocery store. Both Thone and Lane tell me Huntsville Pediatric Associates allowed them to wait in their cars until their appointment times, and everyone was required to wear a mask. The doors were all open, so we didn't have to touch anything, and they just sent us straight back. He used an alcohol swab on his hands before he touched the baby, and um, it honestly put me at ease. Both parents say they're happy with their decisions. And it just really did come down to thinking about what we were protecting him against with the vaccines um, versus what we may be exposing him to. Huntsville Pediatric Associates tell me they are only allowing sick patients in in the afternoon and well patients in the morning to keep them safe. Reporting live in Huntsville, Casey Albert and Way 31 News. We are learning new information about travel across the state during this pandemic. According to the model from the University of Washington, people were moving around a lot more even before the stay at home order was lifted. Take a look for yourself. Beginning on March 12th, mobility went down across the state. It hit a low of 37% below the typical mobility rate on April 4th, the same day the stay at home order went into effect. But beginning on April 11th, that rate slowly started to climb. The model suggests the mobility rate will increase to 17% under the typical rate on May 15th. That's the same day the Safer at Home order is scheduled to expire. The model is also giving us some good news. Since April 17th, the number of new cases each day in Alabama has been around 200. But even at that number, it is more than 1,000 less infections than the model predicts we would see each day. This comes as more than 2,000, even 3,000 people are being tested each day across the state. We are learning in due details about testing in Franklin County. You can go to the Franklin County Health Department tomorrow from 1 to 3.30 to get tested. If you can't make it, that's okay. You can also go between 9 a.m. and 11.30 on Thursday morning. You do need an appointment before you go. Moving north, you can still get an antibody test in Lauderdale County. The test is available at MedPlus in Florence at the drive through clinic. If you're thinking about getting the test, make sure that you don't have any coronavirus symptoms. And we want to stay in Florence for a few more minutes. We are joined now by Deputy Chief Mike Holtz from the Florence Police Department. Thanks for joining us this evening. Sure. Now, we understand the city has a news conference scheduled tomorrow morning regarding opening the city back up. Can you tell us what will be announced? Uh, well, I don't have all, all the details of what's going to be announced. Uh, I, I can tell you kind of what, what we've been dealing with with the uh, most recent transitions, though. All right. We'll, hate, we'll take that then. <laughs> uh, well, when the, the first order came out, this was kind of new to everybody. Uh, so uh, the, we did have some complaints come in on some businesses, things of that nature. Uh, and what we did with those, we just went out, had conversations with those business owners and uh, on most cases, they were just misunderstandings. Uh, either the uh, business didn't understand exactly what the order was about, or the complainant didn't understand exactly what the business owner was doing. So uh, usually it was just a communication uh, issue. Deputy, what challenges do your does your team anticipate as we start to move into these new phases of reopening in communities? Uh, well, that, that's a good question. I think it's going to be something similar to what we've seen so far. Uh, it's good that we're doing these incrementally. We're not just opening and closing the door. Uh, I think that would be bad. Uh, what it does, it gives people a chance to kind of adapt. Uh, and once uh, the next change is announced, uh, people kind of anticipate. I, I do believe there'll be uh, some more complaints, although our complaints have decreased significantly. Uh, like I said, most of those were just communication issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we open back up, I, I do believe there'll be more. And, and, and the last thing we want to do is, is uh, write citations for these. We haven't written one yet, and hopefully we won't have to. Yeah, hopefully not. Testing is ramping up, of course. More positive cases are being reported in the Shoals. Are you adding policies or procedures to keep your officers safe? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, things we've done, we've uh, provided... Uh, 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 personal protective equipment for the officers where they have the opportunity to use that uh, if if uh, complainants or victims or suspects are exhibiting symptoms. Uh, other things we've done, our dispatchers, if, if you happen to call our dispatch uh, center, you'll notice you'll be asked a few more questions about symptoms that you may have. And, and that's just so that our officers can prepare themselves. We're going to, uh, we're fully resourced, uh, we're fully staffed, uh, and we're completely uh, ready to respond uh, uh, with, with whatever needs our community has. Uh, we're just taking a few precautions like that just to protect our officers. Well, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Sure, thank you.